Hey everyone, if you've been wondering whether or not you should buy yourself a serger, you've come to the right place. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what a serger is, the different types of sergers, what they can and cannot do, as well as the cost. So what is a serger? A serger, also known as an overlocker in some regions, is a sewing machine that trims and seals off the raw edge of a fabric and, depending on how many threads you're using, it can also sew a very strong and durable seam. Unlike a regular sewing machine that has two threads, one that goes through the needle and one that's wound around the bobbin, the serger uses many threads, ranging from two to I think probably eight and possibly even more. The serger typically has two needles, although I've seen some that have three, but that is not super common. It also has a little knife that cuts off the raw edge of your fabric to make it nice and even. Sergers are typically classified based on the number of threads they have, and the number of threads they have can dictate what kind of stitches they can do. Let's start with a two-thread serger. A two-thread serger produces a very delicate finish for very fine or lightweight fabrics. It does not sew a durable seam, so you would need to sew this seam with your regular machine first and then finish the edges with the two-thread serger. Next up is the three-thread serger. When threaded with three threads, this serger will use one needle and two loopers to make a stitch, so it's a bit more durable than the two-thread serger. However, it's still not that strong, so I personally don't use it for attaching two pieces of fabric together, although you theoretically could. I personally use it just for finishing raw edges. You can also do decorative stitches, a blind hem, and some other cool things with a three thread serger, so I'll talk more about that in a bit. Now on to the four thread. This one is my personal favorite because in addition to finishing the edges, it also uses two needles to create a very durable and stretchy seam. This is really great for sewing knits because knit fabrics are stretchy by nature and need a seam that will stretch with them. Lastly, I'm going to discuss a five thread serger. You can find sergers with more than five threads, but two to five really are the most common, so I'm gonna stop after this one. Five thread sergers are really great for sewing wovens because they seal off the raw edge of the fabric to keep it from unraveling, and they do the stable chain stitch that attaches the two pieces of fabric together. So instead of sewing your seam with a regular machine and then taking it over to the serger to finish off the raw edges, you can do everything in one shot with a five thread serger. Now keep in mind that most sergers can be threaded multiple different ways. You wouldn't have a serger that can only be threaded as a two thread, for instance. Many domestic sergers are two, three, four models, meaning they can be threaded with two, three, or four threads. Mine is a budget model, so it only has three and four threads. Another common model is 3-5, so you can thread it as a 3-thread or a 5-thread. All that to say, figure out what you actually want to do with your serger and then make sure you buy one with the right amount of threads for that purpose. I primarily use my serger for sewing knits with the basic 4-thread stitch, however there are other things you can do with the serger as well. Many sergers can be used to do blind hems and flat locks, which both typically use 3 threads, and I've linked videos in the description about how to do both of those things. They can also do a wide variety of decorative stitches. However, it is not the same as a cover stitch machine. Cover stitch machines do hems that look like this with two parallel rows of stitching on the right side and a stitch that looks like a serger stitch on the back. So you can buy machines, I think they're called cover locks, that combine the features of a cover stitch machine and a serger, but regular sergers will not do this. Now in terms of how to use a serger, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that because every machine is a little different, but I will give a quick overview. Threading a serger can be a little bit intimidating, but generally machines have color-coded systems with numbers that you follow in order to thread the machine. Definitely use the manual for your machine and follow the directions exactly because it needs to be threaded in the right order in order to work. I usually keep mine on the default setting and that typically works pretty well for most of my fabrics. There's also this thing called differential feed. Regular sewing machines have one set of feed dogs, whereas sergers have two, so you can adjust this dial in order to have the feed dogs move at different speeds, which can be useful for stretch fabrics. Again, I usually just keep mine on the default setting, but you'll have to see what works for whatever fabric you're using, and definitely check out the manual. In terms of actual sewing, it's pretty similar to a regular sewing machine. You lift up the foot, put the fabric under, put the foot back down, and use the foot pedal to control your speed. When you're done, you keep the pedal down for a few seconds to make a chain. This is called chaining off, and then you can just cut the thread. You don't backstitch with a serger the way you do with a regular sewing machine. Some people like to finish their serged seams by cutting it off and then putting a dab of fabric glue, 
or alternatively tying a knot with some of the threads. But honestly, in the industry, you typically don't finish your serge seams in any way. Um, I think this is because like a lot of the seams intersect with other seams and that intersection is enough for the seams to stay together and not need any type of finishing. So yeah, it's really up to you. In terms of price, sergers are typically more expensive than regular sewing machines. Prices are definitely going to differ depending on where you live. I'm based in Canada and I don't think that I've ever seen a serger that costs less than $250 whereas I've definitely seen regular sewing machines for like a hundred bucks. You can obviously find used ones for less money, but I find that they're less common on the secondhand market than regular sewing machines. Sergers can also get quite expensive, ranging into the thousands of dollars and can do cool things like threading themselves or making a lot of cool decorative stitches with upwards of six threads. The last thing I'm going to touch on before concluding is industrial versus domestic sergers. I don't have an industrial serger, but I have used them at school. Similar to an industrial versus a domestic lock stitch machine, and lock stitch is just a fancy way of saying a regular sewing machine basically, uh, industrial sergers are definitely going to be faster and more robust than domestics. This makes industrial sergers better suited to handling thicker fabrics and very high volumes of work than domestic sergers. On the flip side, industrial sergers are definitely going to take up way more space and be a heck of a lot more expensive than a domestic. Another difference is that all the domestic sergers I've ever used make a really loud clanky noise when they're operating. My boyfriend says that my machine sounds like a tractor and he doesn't like being in the same room with me when I'm using it. Industrial sergers on the other hand don't seem to do that. Some of them do make a very loud whirring sound when you turn them on which can be kind of annoying, but others are almost completely silent. Maybe more expensive domestic sergers might be quieter. I got a budget model, so I guess you get what you pay for. All that to say, if you're watching this video, I highly doubt that you'll need an industrial serger. Domestic sergers are pretty good at handling all of the needs of the average sewist. That said, if you are thinking of going pro, you might want to consider getting an industrial. If you want to learn more about the differences between industrial and domestic sewing machines more generally, I do have a video about that, which I have linked in the description. All right, so I've given you a quick overview on sergers. So now comes the most important question. Should you get one? I would say if you sew a lot of knits or you want to start sewing knits, then yes, I would definitely recommend getting a four thread serger because this is one of the easiest and most convenient ways of sewing knits that there is. Plus it looks nice and polished on the inside. If you primarily sew with woven fabrics, sergers are still great for you because they finish off the raw edges of the fabric so that it doesn't unravel and they do so much more quickly and beautifully in my opinion than other methods. You could even get a five thread serger and sew the seams and finish the edges of your woven garments all in one go if you really wanted to save time. Basically the only situations where I wouldn't recommend getting a serger are if you just don't have the money or if you've only just begun sewing and you're not sure if you are going to be doing it regularly or not. If you have a couple hundred dollars and you like sewing clothes, then yes, get yourself a serger. That's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.